Yeah, exactly. If you want to, if yeah, if you want to like see my screen in your web browser, you can just go to this link. But um, so if you did get the, if you did get the, um, the project, this is what you should see if you open up the project. So alert dialog example, and in this SRC folder, so the source folder, and then we open that little thing right there, and we open up main activity Java. So. Um, so yeah, this that's this file right here. So we're going over alert dialogs today. Um, and so an alert dialog is just like a push notification on your iPhone. Um, it's just something that pops up. It'll say a little text, display a little information. Then you can click OK and you know it'll go away. We're also going over toast. So last time I went over toast real quick just to like debug um, when we were doing uh, gesture listeners. But we'll just go over toast again today. They're really powerful in helping um, you debug your code because what you can do is you can um, create a toast and then um, display it somewhere in your code and it'll let you know that um, the code was working fine up until that point. And um, so it's kind of like just a print statement in any other coding language like, oh, okay, like I reached this uh, line of code. Um, so that's how you do it in, in Android with toast. So yeah, toast. Um, if I haven't really explained it, it's kind of just, again, a little pop-up, and it slowly fades away. And uh, I'll actually show you an example. Let me get my emulator going up um, for this project. Excuse me. Have you tried, is Jenny Motion another emulator? Yeah, Jenny Motion's probably better. But, um, OK, so first I'm going to go over our uh, our layout files. So again, I feel I feel like I make this point every time. Um, that's why I made it. I don't know. But uh, so the layout files is in the you're in your project folder. You open that up, and then you go down. You look for the res folder. Then you go out and look for the layout folder. And so here you should see four layouts if you've imported the project. And we'll go over each one of those layouts um, in detail. But for right now, we're going to open up the activity main um, layout file. So this file is going to um, it's loading up. Jeez. All right. So this uh, that might have been the other one. Yeah, that was the other one. Well, it already does. I see. Um. So this layout file, <coughs> this is going to be our main screen. Uh, uh, it's so much is going on. So this is going to be our main screen here. Very simple, but pretty much I just put four buttons on each corner. And um, these buttons, each we're going to click one, and they're going to display a different alert dialog, pretty much. So that's um, this is our main layout file. So when uh, our app loads, this is what's going to show. Um, so if you go back to main activity, we can see that uh, that layout file is called activity main. So if you see down here in um, set content view, we're calling that layout file, and we're saying we want um, that layout to be associated with this Java file. So again, when I went over this, um, I had four buttons, and I also have a text um, text box in the middle. So when we go over here, I'm just declaring the variables up here so that they're global variables. Um, and then I'll define them down here um, in our onCreate method, which again, our onCreate method is the main method of the program. So when the application loads, it looks for that on create method and just runs through that first. Um, so yeah, so so far we've defined our buttons, we've defined our um, text box, which is of uh, type text view, and then we're also defining our context. So uh, context is just, um, I go over this is like the same point I go over every time as well, but context is just kind of the scope of the application. So the context is, uh, you know, this activity, this file. Um, it con context is a very like abstract notion. Uh, it's not like a concrete data type, like an integer or a string. It's kind of just like um, the realm that this application is happening in. So, so we have this main activity, and this is our only Java file for the uh, entire project. So this runs the entire project. Um, so we've declared our variables and. Um, now we look to do work in the onCreate method. So again, this onCreate method is uh, what runs first. 
when the project loads and it sets the content view to be this layout file that I showed you guys. So this, so it sets up this screen and then it looks for um, all the variables that I've named in this XML file. So here like button one, um, I've named button two, I've gave, given them IDs. We look for those IDs and we attach them to variables. So now we have all these variables um, that now reference the buttons in our layout file. Um, are there any questions so far? Am I going too fast, too slow? Good, all right, okay. So yeah, that stuff we've kind of already gone over in previous lectures, um, just go over real quick. Um, so when we think about alert dialogues, uh, they're a class that Android gives us. Um, and so we need to use a builder to actually build the alert dialogues themselves. So that's what in this line, the alert dialog builder, um, we're creating a new um, alert dialog builder that's going to pretty much assemble this alert dialog for us. And then we're going to ask it to build it for us and assign it to an alert dialog type variable. And pretty much this allows us to use the same alert dialog builder for each alert dialog. So we don't have to create a new builder for each alert dialog we create. We're just going to use the same one. And pretty much we can just think of him assembling um, each alert dialog. So let's see if this is still installing, isn't it? Oh, it's about to run. So our first alert dialog. And let's see, this should be loaded up now on the emulator. So here it is. Our first alert dialog is uh, associated with this button one, and this is the emulator, the Android app. So we click it, and this is what we're creating. This a little alert right here. Um, I didn't really put much information in, I just gave it, said this is the title, this is the basic alert dialog. Let's go over how we create that right now. Um, uh, here it is. Okay. So, here's our, here's our, um, the part where we'll, we'll be creating the first alert dialog. So as you can see, it's only a couple lines. What we use is, we use this alert builder, um, variable that we made. And we say, um, we tell the builder we want to set the message and we want to set the title to these strings that we have inputted. So we can change this to anything um, to change the title. So I'll just call this like GAI lecture and the title will change next time we run the uh, app on the emulator. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, it kind of says it right there in the method names. We're taking the alert builder variable and we're setting the message and saying the title. Here we, um, we're going to create a click listener. So uh, if you haven't been here for previous uh, lectures on the click listener, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just a little guy that we associate with a button or something and it just kind of, he stays there and he waits for a click to happen. So when a click happens, then this method on click runs. So it's kind of self-explanatory. We have a click listener and then we have something that um, on a click will perform an action. So for our on click, all we're doing is we're taking the text variable, so that variable that's in blue, which if we remember is up here. Um, it's that text view that we have in the center of our screen of the app. We take that and we just set the text to say we clicked out of the alert dialog one. So now we have this click listener, but we haven't assigned it to a button yet. So what we're doing right here is we say, we tell the alert builder we're gonna have a positive button. Positive just means yes. Um, negative means no, uh, so you can do set positive button, set negative button. They don't really mean different things. Um, it's kind of just to help you categorize, you know, which one's like a okay and which one's like a cancel. Um, but what we do is we do, we're gonna set the positive button. That first input is the text that we want the button to have, so just okay. And then button one click listener is the click listener we made up here. Um, so does this syntax, does, is anyone concerned about the syntax up there, like on click listener, button one click listener equals new on click listener? Um, does that not make sense to anyone or like anyone have any questions on it? Um, it's a little weird because what we're doing is we're creating a new instance of a class and then we're, we're overriding um, this method on click. So that's kind of why it's not, uh, why it's a little weird with all the brackets and, and parentheses. All right, so, yeah. So how does that associate with button one? Like, 
Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Actually, that that's a little confusing. So, um, up here I just create all the alert dialogs, but actually down here at the bottom, I actually have like button one, button two, button three, button four, and I just set their click listeners to do like show alert one, show like alert two, show alert three. So right now in in those um, the pieces of code up here, we're just creating the actual alerts. So you created alert one, which will later be called. Yes, which will later be, be called by a click listener on the the actual button that we see when the app loads. So yeah, actually that's that's a little confusing point, but pretty much like I'm just creating all the the uh, alerts and then down here I'm just showing them on clicks. So yeah, if you guys have questions, also you can also ask Bert. Like if you have like a little syntax question or something, um, you can also ask Bert. You know he's as knowledgeable as me. Uh, so we created our alert. We are we set the we set the positive button and um, now we just create an alert dialog variable and we tell the alert builder let's actually assemble this thing and then let's reference um, the alert dialog or alert one variable to uh, reference this alert dialog that the builder just created. So if we run this, um, so our first alert dialog has been created. Any questions on that at all? All right, none. Um, okay. So again, this thing should pop up in a second. Um, so yeah, we made our first one. If you remember, I changed the title to say like GAI lecture. Um, so here we go, GAI lecture. And so this button right here, this okay, is where we um, put the click listener that we just made. So the set positive button, that's this okay button. And we just click that. And it clicks out, and again, it changes this text view to click out of alert dialog one. So I know this isn't the prettiest thing, but it's just supposed to show you guys um, what each button does. So now we're doing button two, so we're going to make this alert dialog. And this one is just um, has a edit text in it, so an input text box. And it changes this middle stuff. So let's see how we do that. So um, with the second alert dialog, we're actually creating a custom XML um, uh, layout file. So like what we do for the big screens, like what I showed you guys over here, um, we created this XML file that uh, shows how we want to have the layout. We can actually do that with the alert dialogs as well. So that's what we've done with the um, next three dialogs. And the views can be really simple. So when you create a new view for an alert dialog, it's kind of like... Um, Whenever you have an alert dialog, you kind of you have this title area up here, and you also have this button up here. So this view that you create is pretty much just this little. It's um, gonna go in this little box right here. So this little layout. So it allows you to customize um, your alert dialog to uh, basically look however you want it. So if you have a ton of pictures that you want to like have someone choose between, or maybe like a drop down menu, or um, a bunch of radio buttons. You can do that um, by just creating a custom XML view and then just setting that view to be um, to be the view that's in the alert dialog. So that's exactly what we do for the next three alert dialogs. So here, this is um, our the XML file layout file I use for the second alert dialog, the one that we just saw in the emulator. And so all this does is we just have a relative layout. So just like this guy over here, um, he has a relative layout which um, just means that we create the view with objects relative to each other. Um, and all I have is I just have this thing called an edit text. We've gone over it a little bit before, but it's just an input text box. So it's that little line and you can put text into it. Um, I give it an ID so I can get the text from it. And then I just gave it a random width and I want it in the center to make it look nice. So that's what these lines are. Layout height, wrap content, which means just make it as big as it needs to be. I don't have a specific height, and then I just said it'll be 100 pixels wide. And so what I did was in the main activity.java, we have to inflate the layout. So this is kind of a weird concept too, inflating layouts. Pretty much when you um, up at the top, when we did that set content view, and we called our main uh, XML file, so right here, 
set content view, and we, we called this layout file that we wanted to be like the basis um, layout file for our screen. Uh, what that does is that inflates the view, or and that it, it inflates that layout file. So we can think of inflating as actually creating a variable that is the layout file. So right now we just have a, a XML file that says we want it to look like this. And what inflating does is it takes that file and then it actually um, creates a variable that, that has all the view properties that we created in, this, in our XML file. So you can kind of just, you know, inflating, it's just blew it up so it's like a real thing. So now we can actually use it. So we just have to create a layout inf inflator. And this is just something that I found off online. Um, I don't know the syntax at all to create this layout inflator. Um, pretty much, we just use the context of the application and it's something that's built into Android. Um, and then so we have this inflator and then we create this um, variable of type view. So uh, just the general view variable and we inflate our layout and this is a view group this null thing the input is like view group if you have a ton of views that you want to put together but that's a little more advanced um, so yeah we just inflated our second view and now we can use it and paste it wherever we want so again I'm using the same alert builder as I did up here and um, so I set the view to be the view that we just inflated and I set the title to say enter your name. Up here, um, you remember this edit text from this XML file? So I wanna create a variable and I wanna go into the view that we created, so the second dialog view, and we're gonna use that uh, method that we use every single lecture, find view by ID, to kinda of dive into um, that specific view we created and then get the reference to that um, that edit text that we made. So we gave it that ID second dialog input. And here we do, we find view by ID, r.id.second dialog input. So um, the find view by ID method goes in, grabs the edit text, figures out the reference, and then put gives it to this um, variable input text. So now we can talk to the edit text, get its, um, get its information by using this variable input text. So we already went over set view and set title. And then again, we just create another click listener. So button to click listener. So again, this is going to be associated. Yeah. Sorry, what's the final two words? Sorry, I missed that. Oh, yeah. So final is um, because I'm kind of creating uh, these variables in this onCreate method. So we're in the onCreate method. Up here, I defined our variables like button, button one, button two, button three, button four. Um, I defined them up here. And so they were global variables. So they exist everywhere. Um, so up here with this final, because we're creating it within um, a method and we're gonna have to use it in another method later, uh, we need to make sure that it's final so that um, it's actually there when the other method runs. So it just persists outside the method. Exactly, exactly. That's the actual uh, reason. <laughs> okay, no. thanks. No worries. Um, so yeah, we're just creating another click listener. Again, for that little button that says OK. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to, again, set the text of that middle text box. But we're going to take that edit text that we made up there, so the input text. And we're going to use the method on a get text. So it gets the text. And then we're going to convert it to a string, um, string type, so that we can actually use it as text. Um, that's kind of a subtle point. So the get text method doesn't return a string. I'm assuming you guys know what a string is, which is just uh, a bunch of characters. It's a variable that has a bunch of characters. Um, we're just, it, uh, the get text method doesn't return a string, so we have to um, convert it to a string. <clears throat> and so now we created that click listener, so when we click on the button that says okay, we'll run this method and we'll change the text to the name. And I think, you, and then we just create the, uh, again, we create the second alert by using this dot create. So the alert builder actually builds up the, the dialogue again. So just to show you guys again, you know, it's this button. So this is, um, here's the title that we changed. This is a basic alert dialogue. That's actually, I forgot to um, change the message from last time. So that's actually why that's that. But. Uh, and then we this button, okay, we'll set the uh, edit text. We'll set whatever in this 
um, edit text to the middle. So here we click OK, and we see Habib's name up there. I spelled that right, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So. So any questions on the second alert dialog? Um, we took another step of complexity with using a custom view, um, but it's pretty much the same as the first one. We just inflated the view, and then we set the alert dialog to use that custom view we created. Are there any questions at all? Um, all right, so it says inflator dot inflate. Yeah. Did you have to make a variable inflator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we did up here, this, layout, this inflator of type layout inflator. So yeah, this is, um, it's very weird syntax, and I just copied the syntax from offline, you know, like I didn't memorize get system service or whatnot. Um, but, you know, it reads right here, it's, uh, I don't know. It's you used it only for like the second alert. Yeah, I'm actually gonna use it for every single alert from now on. What it just does is takes an XML file and just like makes it a real thing and not oh, just like okay. a file. Like it like actually creates it so then we can use it. Um, so now we're doing the third alert dialog. This one's just to show toasts. So we're not really doing anything different with the alert dialog from the second one. We're just showing um, a toast, which again is a great debugging tool. You guys will see why because um, it just pops up and fades out. You don't have to touch anything and um, it'll just appear. So, you, so you'll know when you're debugging um, you know, if, if you keep getting your application to crash, um, what you can use a toast for is just copy and paste it uh, somewhere in the project where you think there might be an error, so maybe before an error line and then after an error line, and you can see if it pops up. And if it pops up before it crashes, you know um, the crash happens after the toast. And if the toast never appears and it crashes, you know that the crash happened before the toast. Android and Eclipse in general is really, really like, the debugging is really annoying. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever peered over at like this thing Logcat, which is like, I'm not even doing anything and there's stuff like running. So it's like very hard to debug. So toasts are pretty much um, a primary way that I, or, that I use to debug. Um, it's kind of like just if you put like a print line into like your normal Java code, it's like a similar idea. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it's like. Um, so to show that, uh, We'll have this alert dialog. We'll just say toasty. And so when we click OK, the toast will appear. So you see that little guy that appeared at the bottom? I'm not touching anything. It should fade away. So it just pops up. Like it could be something like, um, you know, if you have a game, like, oh, you just be your high score. Something that the user doesn't need to necessarily say, like, approve or decline, but just like, here's a notification. Um, so they are very useful, you know. If you click OK or something, um, you know, say you have a settings page and you want to like confirm that the settings have been changed, you know, you can have a toast pop up. So uh, here again, we're inflating this. Uh, I guess we're inflating the second dialog, um, and we find the the input text again for this edit text. We set the view again. Um, we set the title. So what we've done with the last couple couple alert dialogues and then um, here's where we see the toast so in this on click listener so we're, this thing that we're going to associate with that OK button we have it just takes two lines to make a toast and um, and then show it so we have this the variable toast and I just called it pop up toast here's its variable name and so we're going to use the toast class that Android gives us um, so toast and we're just going to use that variable make toast um, Self-explanatory, you know, just makes the toast. We use the context of the app. So where is this toast going to occur? It's going to occur in this activity. We use the um, the string. So whatever I input it in the alert dialog, that little edit text, we're going to get that information and and have that um, be the text of the toast. And then we have over here we have the duration and toast. The toast class comes with some built-in. Um, Duration lengths, so we just use toast dot length long. Um, so we're just we just want it to appear long. We can do toast short if we want it to be like real short and not and fade away very quickly. Um, and then we just over here just do take the pop up to or take the toast variable we made and do dot show. So it just shows the toast. And um, 
I don't know if you guys have figured out why they call it toast, but just because it pops up just like toast out of a toaster. That's, that's why it's called a toast. Um, any questions at all? I know I kind of breezed through that one um, as far as the alert dialog was concerned. Um, but yeah, so these two lines is all you need to create a toast, and um, I use them all the time. Uh, you could put any text in here. Let's actually try length short. And uh, we'll check it out. All right. So yeah, for the third dialog, I pretty much did exactly what I did for the second one. I just now have a toast um, on the onclick method. And then again, I create alert three by doing, uh, we've just created a simple alert dialog with button one. Um, in button two, we uh, use the custom view to have an edit text in there. Um, and we could change the text in the background. Button three, we have the toast. Now I have the toast duration as short, so you guys can see the comparison. Last time I had it as long. Um, so it should fade away pretty quickly. So yeah, just a little pop-up. And so this fourth one, we're going to take it one step further with the XML files, and we're going to, um, I have a question. Yeah. So, um, so the edit text in the third alert dialog is referencing uh, the same second dialog in the third So it's saying it's inflating the second, the second dialogue. dialogue. And it's not doing the third dialogue? Yeah, so actually this is a, uh, this is a, I just noticed this this morning. This is actually an error um, that I inflate the second dialogue. I should inflate the third dialogue. The lucky thing is that they're the same exact the same. thing. Yeah. yeah. So I just created it. And you reset the title and yeah, I, reference, I, you know, the, you know, the edit text. So, the, so, so you're using basically, you're basically not using the third thing. Yeah, the third one was, was just copy and pasted pretty much, same exact view, but I just wanted to break it up so that like we weren't just reusing it. So I could actually change it to the third dialogue. Let's see if it still works. Um, Cause that's actually. And then uh, find view by ID, third dialogue. No, because I'm using this variable. Okay. Um, and so I'm looking in this view that I created with last time the second dialogue, this time the third dialogue. The actually ID name might be different. Uh, so yeah, that actually might be a problem. But yeah, that's the third dialogue input. Yeah, so pretty much, I since I did the same thing with the... Um, yeah, it worked because yeah. you're using... You're I'm using this... Dialogue. Yeah, I'm using the second ID and then I was looking for the second input, but let me actually just change this now. It's the exact same thing. The third dialogue and second dialogue are, you know, I'm clicking between them and it looks like the file doesn't change. Yeah. So, so they're theoretic, exactly the same. Theoretically, you can set up a template for multiple dialogues. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what I meant to show is that you can use the same view with multiple or dialogues so you don't have to have a different one for each time. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, I had two different variables referencing kind of the same, the same uh, edit text. Uh, so now I just switched them. Let's see if it still works. One, three. Uh, um, whoa. Too slow of an emulator. Okay. So yeah, it works. Um, so yeah, they're essentially the same. Any other questions on our third alert dialogue at all? Is this going too fast, going too slow? Anything like we want to go over a little more in depth? All right, silent crap, no big deal. Um, okay, so our fourth alert dialog, we're going to be using images and we're gonna have a button that's gonna do something within the view rather than this button down here. We're gonna, have, we're gonna use a button within our view to actually do something. So uh, this is just an image I got offline and I created this on paint, it's kind of scary. Um, but so we now use that button to change something in the view. So um, what I didn't do was create it so you could switch the image back just to make it simple. What you just do is have like a Boolean, like is the first image shown like true, false, or like you'd have some way where you know what image was shown and then when you click this, it just go to the other one. But so for now, it just resets every time that you open up a new alert dialog. But so now we have the fourth alert dialog. So 
let's check out a look at that XML file because that's a different XML file than the second and third one. So this is the um, the view that I made. Uh, so again, we have this image and we have that button. So I, I created an image view. Um, I made it linked to this thing called Smiley1, which is in the Drawable folder. Um, uh, just a quick note on Drawable. The Drawable folders, it's weird because they all have, like there's five Drawable folders, but you only use like at, um, at Drawable up here. So it's like, look in the Drawable folder and look for this thing called Smiley1. Pretty much the Drawable different folders, um, you can almost think of them as the same folder. Um, but all those five folders are within the same folder. That's a, that's a weird concept, but they're pretty much the same thing. They just have different, um, each folder has a different resolution. So like this thing that says uh, LDPI, that's uh, low density pixel. So, so very, um, maybe small images, things that don't need to have high resolution. So each one has a different, um, has a different resolution. So I think depending on, uh, the size of your image um, or whatnot, and if you have, say you have the same image um, in each five of those folders, but it has a different resolution, um, Android will like load the one that's gonna be the fastest or best, like depending on how big it needs to be or whatnot. Um, so that's why we have those different folders. But you can put it in any folder and still use this at drawable uh, smiley one. And so that's this little image right here, which um, is this guy. So that's what we referenced there. So we have our button that's to the right of it, um, using this layout to right of the fourth image, and uh, you know it just says switch image. And again, we uh, in this main activity, we create those variables here using the final um, keyword so that it persists throughout uh, the entire file, and that thing fourth image and switch image. Um, those are the two IDs I gave. So fourth image and switch image. So uh, yeah, we inflated. We looked in the fourth dialog view to find those IDs. And now pretty much everything we're doing is in this um, on click listener. So now we have, uh, we've had on click listeners before, three times before, but we've never had this view dot on click listener. So the reason we need to do this view dot on click listener is we need to say that we're creating a click listener for the type of uh, for um, the type view. So the variable type view, and you can see that up here we created a um, we created a uh, variable of type view. So view is uh, kind of exactly what it sounds like, just a layout or um, how do I how do I describe it? A view is pretty much with all like a uh, image view, button, text view, those are all children of the view class. And the view class is just a general um, variable type to contain like layouts and uh, you know, the XML file we made over here. We just took this and we put it in a view variable or a view type var variable type. So that's why we're creating an on-click listener that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be a click listener in uh, the view uh, variable. That was a pretty roundabout way of saying it, but so yeah, so we're creating an on click listener so that it works with the, um, the view type variables. And what we're doing is we're taking this, um, this variable we made picture and we're setting the image resource to be smiley2, which is this guy right here. Um, so yeah, on the click, it takes that, uh, that image view picture and it changes the source of the picture. So it changes what image is displayed. So then we take the button that we need, so switch image is this button that we create in that view and we assign that a click listener. Um, and, that, and it gets the click listener that's of type view. So if you just did an on click listener without this view dot in front of it and um, you get an error because uh, this set on click listener, the switch image is from the view variable, and uh, we've been creating dialog uh, click listeners. So it's a subtle point. It's they're two separate things, but they're pretty much they're very similar. But there's little differences about them, um, and that's why we need to have different click listeners for each type of variable 
that we have. Um, that, does that point, any questions on that point? It's a very subtle point, um, but it's important. All right. Um, so we set the view as, that, as we did before with the last two to the uh, fourth dialog view, which we inflated. Whoopsies. That we inflated up here. And we set the title, switch the image. And then now we create the on click listener for the, um, for the OK button of the fourth dialog. So that built in button to the alert dialog. And we don't have anything in the on click because we don't want it to do anything. Um, but I just set up a click listener. So if we wanted to do something later, we'd already have the variable and we'd already have it associated with the um, set positive button. So yeah, it does nothing. It just clicks out. Um, if you didn't have a click listener, it would still do the same thing. This is just precaution. So later on, if we want a click listener, or if we want it to change the text or do something, um, we can just uh, use this variable that we've already associated with that OK button at the bottom of the alert dialog. And then finally, as we've done three other times before, we create from the alert builder uh, alert for. And so now we have all our alerts. And like what I was showing to be before, we, um, we have all those buttons that I created in the main view. And we just have, for each one, it shows um, a certain uh, alert dialog. And here, because um, I had to set the image resource, so the image for um, that smiley face image, we wanted to set it back to the original one every time that the uh, alert uh, loads. So if I didn't have that line, I'd click switch image, and it switched that second image. And then I could click out of the alert dialog, and I could click on that button again. That'll show the same alert dialog, and the image would be the same um, as the last time we closed it. Uh, because it's a variable, and we kind of just hide it, so we make it invisible, and then it'll appear. So it's not like we create a new alert dialog every time we show the alert dialog. We've created a variable previously, and then um, the, uh, any changes we make to it will persist through the alert dialog. So what time is it? So it's 11.53. Um, hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Um, are there any questions, like overall, overarching questions at all? Really don't be afraid to ask. Um, you know, no one understands anything the first time. Um, and I know I don't explain things perfectly. So, uh, you know, are there any questions at all? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I missed this, but um, in the onclick methods within the onclick listener, what exactly are the parameters being passed in? Like oh, yeah, yeah. Dialog interface R0, like, what do those mean? Or is that sort of just something we should do for now and then worry about later? Um, so these things, actually, when you, uh, so for example, let me just click out of this. Right, so I reset. So here we have an error. So those those like terrible names came from me just like adding unimplemented methods and they're like um, they're inputs that are given when like Eclipse pretty much like uh, does it for you just to save time. But pretty much um, what it looks like is that the dialog interface um, variable is uh, how do I explain it? it it's it's kind of what it sounds like. It's just like the dialog interface is um, kind of the dialog itself, I guess. So it kind of, we don't have to worry about like dialog in which because those automatically are put in um, into the on click method. Like we don't have to define those variables and then like pass them in. They're just uh, variables that are automatically passed in. But so the dialog, I believe, is just kind of referencing the dialog itself. So if you wanted to change um, the dialog, you'd, you could use the dialog uh, variable name. Um, so, I, so I think I've actually really never used these. Um, they're kind of just given to you, uh, which I think will, um, what I think which is, is that you can have three buttons in the bottom of an alert dialog. And maybe I should have actually done that in this one. But um, pretty much you can have three buttons. So one's supposed to be like a yes, a no, and a cancel or something. So um, Android comes built in with those three buttons at the bottom. So uh, let me see if I can do it real quick. Um, 
So I'm just gonna copy paste this. So which dialogue is this? The fourth one. Okay. So here I'm um, I'm just doing this on the fly, so hopefully it'll work. But pretty much we have a positive button, we have a negative button, and I think you can also create a neutral button. So you can have like three buttons, yes, no, and cancel. Um, so you can see that they're using the same click listener. So I think what you could do is have a same click listener for all three buttons, and then this that um, int variable which would be which button was pressed. So it might be negative one for the negative button, might be zero. So just passes it, passes in an integer to let you know like which button was clicked out of those three. Um, but again, I haven't really used it that much. Uh, pretty much, I always just create new click listeners for each button. But this would save space and it's probably save a little memory as well, um, if that's a concern. But so let's see, what was this button for? Okay, so yeah, so here we have no and okay. So now I click this, and um, it's still running through the same click listener that we used before, but this input which is going to be different. Um, exactly what it is, I don't know. We could actually find out. Um, In uh, the actual code we got it, it said, uh, I think it only had one thing. Um, the onclick method had a view. So it didn't even take in there. Oh, yeah, here, here is, um, this is the on click for the view. So that's just inputting the view itself that it's part of. So, um, so it depends on what you're clicking on. Yeah, each, each click listener, so this is the click listener that's for type view, and the other one was for type the dialog interface, or, yeah, um, alert dialog type. And uh, so what those are doing are they're passing in the objects that they're, uh, referencing themselves. So like this button's part of this object, so it passes in that button to the object so that maybe um, if you want to manipulate part of that view or part of that alert dialog, you'd have it right there. Um, and then because the alert dialog has like multiple buttons that are kind of built in, um, that's why we have that extra which variable. So, um, so here I'm just going to do Okay, so here um, I have that toast and we're taking that input which, so let's actually see um, which one appears. So again, this is another great use of toast, like where we have that question, you know, what is that which input? And I think that it has to deal with which button you press on, but now we're just gonna use a toast and I'm inputting that which, and I just did that plus empty string to like convert it to a string automatically. Um, and so now when we check out this, uh, this app, it should appear on the bottom. So we click no, and so negative two pops up, and so we click okay, and negative one pops up. So zero is probably the neutral one. Um, and yeah, it just using an integer just to like keep track rather than passing like a string like negative button or something like, you know, it's more concise, uh, less memory is needed to just have like an integer value. Um, that was a great question though. Uh, any other questions at all? Done. All right. I know you guys just got here. Were you here for the Android uh, lecture? You here for something else, or you guys? Are you here for the Android lecture? Or? Uh, the design lecture. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I figured since um, yeah, the design lecture is actually in another room at noon. Um, I think so. Or is it in this one? Okay. Yeah. But thanks for joining us for uh, the last couple minutes. Um, so yeah, if there's no asking questions, um, I hope this made a little sense. Uh, you know, feel free. This code will should go up on GitHub. We had a little technical difficulties this morning, but um, it should be up there. We're gonna try to create a GAI repository. So there's a lot of sample projects that you guys can use, um, or uh, code from the lectures. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Global App Initiative is gonna be the GitHub. Okay, yeah. Or if you want to share the bit.ly link. Oh yeah, so uh, we can use, um, what was what was the it's link? Bit.ly slash G-A-I dash lecture.
Okay. I think the lecture is lowercase. All right. I'm not sure if that matters. Yeah, I don't know actually. I think for a bit leaves it might. Um, so we have this uh, this URL right here. Let me go on to the internet. Um, yeah, it is lowercase l. It does matter. Uh, Kevin, what's your GitHub username? Uh, I actually have two. My Kevin R Mannix. Kevin R Mannix. There's nothing embarrassing up here, is there? Okay. This is because my Google Chrome is messed up. Um, Kevin R Mannix. Yeah. Like R, like just the letter R. So yeah, here's the repository. Um, so lecture one, Timothy, try to use this repository a little more to kind of give you guys code um, that you can actually work with. And it's not an hour of uh, us going over code and then you not having any concrete examples to like work from. So yeah, so that's it. If you have any questions, come up after. Honestly, um, I love hearing questions. I love hearing feedback. Um, you know, because I want to make it so it's for you guys, easy to learn. I'm not going too fast, not going too slow, not being too boring. Um, so yeah, come up after and, and please let me know if you have any questions or just want to tell me I suck or, or anything, you know. Um, so yeah, you got something to say? Alright, thank you, yeah. Yep. <laughs>